video. I hope I can do justice to these families, bring their stories to light. I'll have a huge following on YouTube, but if it reaches the story reaches the ears of one person who maybe remembers something or knew these people or knew some people that maybe they were involved with and it can bring some information out to the family to the police it's worth my time and it's worth my time to bring these stories to people because these missing murdered people these people who are unidentified someone someone they are someone's love if a friend and they deserve their story to be told regardless of if it leads anywhere or not I tell these stories because these people are not just these people they are they were human beings they deserve some justice and they deserve to be treated with respect in their death no matter what kind of lifestyle they may have been living I've done a, a few stories on some people who were involved with the wrong crowds of people who got involved in drugs or other activities and maybe they had some mental illness or something but that doesn't matter no one should have the right to take someone else's life from them and I appreciate everybody for just sticking around four years since you've been missing mom 1460 long exhausting days that I have spent looking for you, racking my brain for what to do to find you, or even a clue. I contacted the FBI again today to try to get their help. I've contacted news stations and newspapers to see if they would run the story again, and I've gone all around town putting your flyer up again. We have missed you so much during the holidays, birthdays, and life events. Easter was the first holiday without you after you went missing. I remember spending that first Easter looking in the woods at the state park. It seemed like yesterday and forever ago at the same time. Your grandkids miss you so much and you have grandkids you haven't even met yet. You were such a great mom and grandma. I hope you're out there somewhere so the new grandkids can get to meet you sometime. Since you've been missing, our lives have been crushed by so much heartache. And not knowing if you are okay somewhere or not. We keep a chair open for you every holiday. We tried to make your famous deviled eggs for Easter. The kids loved that so much, but they just weren't the same as yours. We used the china you gave me that you used for special holidays during your childhood. I made an Easter wreath and included your favorite yellow roses. We honor you every holiday and celebration, but it's not the same without you here. So these are the words of the child of this missing woman. This was something that I talked about recently in one of my videos. Is We don't really look at things from the viewpoint of the person who's suffering this this disappearance of their loved one. We read the statistics. I had a guy tell me recently, someone commented on one of my videos that I should stick to the story. And my reply was, the story is what I make it because it's, it's my video, it's my channel, me telling this. And I, and I could come on here and be... Um, very clinical about it and read the statistics and say this is the day they went missing this is their description and this is the location and leave it at that but you don't give any human element to it and, and do we sit and think every single time we hear about someone going missing what their family must be going through those first hours and then the first weeks and then once Everybody else, all the people that have come to search and to help hang flowers and put the word out, once they have to go back to their lives and, and the loved ones of these missing people are still sitting at home waiting for a phone call and they feel all alone. 
even with the police involved and the FBI, um, after a while, the search starts to become more of a code case. And But it's never code to them. Like this girl said, you know, they, they celebrate the holidays, but they still grieve and mourn. So I'm just going to read from this missing persons flyer. There's a $20,000 reward offered for Betty Alexander of Sullivan, Missouri. She was last seen April the 10th, 2019. At the time of her disappearance, she was 69 years old, and she was last seen at the Center Street Apartments in Sullivan, Missouri. She was 4 foot 11 inches tall and weighed 145 pounds. She had dark brown dark brown hair with all-over blonde highlights and blue eyes. Not the same without you. A heartbreaking post calls for renewed search for a Sullivan County woman missing for four years. The family of a Missouri woman is still hoping someone knows what happened to their mother. Tanya Miller gave an interview to Five on Your Side in 2022 but her family is no closer to knowing what happened to their mother, who would now be 72-year-old Betty Alexander. Alexander disappeared from her Sullivan, Missouri apartment without a trace. She would now be 73, like I said, 4 foot 11, 145 pounds, with brown hair and blonde highlights and blue eyes. She left everything behind, her daughter said. The only thing that was that has bothered me from day one is the fact that she left her glasses on the recliner. And these were her daily glasses. Now, I also wear glasses, and any of you listeners who might as well, you know that if you are a person who wears glasses, or even contact lenses, you're not going to just leave them. It, it's as though she was sitting in her recliner and maybe someone came to the door or maybe someone entered her apartment without her knowing and shocked and surprised her, um, you know, came upon her. Because if someone came to my door right now and I had, I'm sitting here with my glasses off, the first thing I'm going to do is put them on my face before I go open the door so I can see who I'm looking at, you know? Sanders' purse and keys were found in the apartment, but her daughter said there was a there was one thing missing, a box of fentanyl patches. The box had just been delivered, but it was not located in her apartment. A Facebook page called Bring Betty Home shares updates and works to keep her case at the top of everyone's mind. So, let me see if I can find anything else about her. The fentanyl patches. Could it be that someone who lived in her apartment or her apartment complex had witnessed these these medications being delivered and came over to, you know, try to steal them from her. Maybe she came into the apartment and surprised someone in the process of robbing her. But what happened to her? Um, I think most people, if, if someone comes to your home or if, if they come into your home while you're not there and you came in and surprised them or if um, they break into your home while you're there, I think that if they are going to go to the um, extreme of murdering you because they don't want to be, you know, a, an eyewitness, that it's very unlikely that they're going to remove you from that place. They're going to try to get out of there as quickly as they can. Um, it's not likely that she asked anyone to take her any place or give her a ride because she didn't take her glasses, her keys, her purse. So she was in the beginning stages of dementia. Alexander is considered an endangered missing adult 
and the date of her last contact was April the 10th, 2019. When they mentioned that she was in the beginning stages of dementia, that, that might explain a little bit about maybe if she might have wandered off. But where is she? Even when people wander off from their homes, if they are found, it's usually within a day or two of them going missing. But if they are found, they're usually found pretty close to where they were at, you know, to their home. If she was not driving, if she was on foot, she couldn't have gotten very far. And if she died, if she wandered away and something happened to her and she died, they would have found her remains. Um, she was last seen in her garden at approximately 3 p.m., Family had no contact for several days and went to her residence. They found her shoes, purse, keys, and glasses inside. She has a large scar on her spine from having had back surgery. Betty Alexander was last seen wearing a black hooded jacket. That's the only description of what she may have been wearing. Betty was last seen Wednesday, April the 10th, 2019, at her apartment. None of her medication for the next day was taken. It was the last day that she was there because none of her medications had been taken after that. She does have the very beginning stages of dementia, but the doctor said that without her medication, you would not see much of a difference because the dosage was so low. On Thursday, the 11th, her in-home physical therapist was unable to reach her by phone, and her Meals on Wheels stated that she wasn't home when they arrived either. Meals on Wheels said the door was ajar on Friday, April the 12th, so they left the meal but didn't see Betty. They left the door ajar, when her daughter arrived at her apartment on Sunday to pick her up, the door was shut and locked. She checked Betty's apartment where she found her Meals on Wheels on the table, and the milk was warm, so it had been sitting out, had been sitting there the whole time. Betty's glasses were sitting on the arm of her recliner, and her purse with all of her belongings, including her ID cards and keys, were in the apartment. Nothing had been touched. Her neighbors, none of her neighbors saw her since Wednesday. So this is starting to sound to me like on Wednesday, she's outside of her apartment. She's in the garden. Possibly someone approached her. Maybe she left her door unlocked and someone entered her apartment and was inside the apartment when she returned. The fentanyl being missing is probably what they went in there looking for because if none of her other belongings were taken, I would say that that was what they were looking for. Yeah, I think these fentanyl patches are the key to all this. I think that someone who either lived in her apartment complex or someone that she would had contact with, maybe through church or... Um, someone maybe who come and did gardening work or something like that in the neighborhood knew that she was getting those patches. And you would not think that someone would go to the extreme to murder someone over fentanyl patches, but it may have been the fact that they wanted them and the only way to get them was to take them from her and they knew that she could identify them. That the, the physical therapist came to do her physical therapy. Her door was shut. She did not respond. They could not reach her by phone. The next day, the Meals on Wheels person comes and the door is ajar. Um, did they open the door and set her Meals on Wheels food and milk on the table? Did they enter the apartment? Were they interviewed by the police? Is it possible that she was gone? 
I don't know anything about the Meals on Wheels person, and I'm not trying to point a finger at them, but I'm just suggesting that it's possible that they stuck their head in the door, called out her name, realized she wasn't home. Could it be possible that they took the patches? But it's still very much a mystery, and I do hope that the family does get some answers and that this is solved one day. But I really do believe that the fentanyl patches play a role in this to some degree. If it's not the main reason that they wanted rid of this, you know, if if it's not the main reason that they attacked this woman or came into her apartment and shocked her and surprised her, I, I don't know, but that's that's a telling sign. Maybe someone knew that she had just recently had back surgery and knew that she had physical therapy coming to her apartment and assumed that she had pain medications. Maybe she came back into the apartment that day and, and saw these people there. It was probably someone she knew from the apartment complex. Maybe someone's... Um, you know, one of her neighbor's husbands or brothers or children, or it could have been a woman, but I don't know. The daughter comes over on Sunday, and the door is shut and locked. So my opinion is someone probably killed her in the apartment. And how did they get her body out of the apartment? Sometime between Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, more than likely, it took place on the day that the door was open. Um, this person probably killed her. Maybe they didn't mean to, or maybe they knew that she was going to identify them, and they probably choked her, strangled her, something like that, and then came back when they thought they were in the clear to maybe they got some help. Maybe they found someone that came and helped them, and they were able to get her body out of the apartment. Um, did anybody in the apartment complex say that they saw anyone coming and going from her apartment? I don't know. It's very strange, and it's very sad. But this tiny little woman, if these people came there just to rob her of drugs... You know, I wonder what happened to them. You know, someone killed this woman, I, I would almost guarantee it. Because if she walked away and wandered away, eventually someone would have spotted her. Someone in the neighborhood, someone down the street, someone two streets over, wherever it was she might wander off to, would notice this woman wandering around. Because she probably wouldn't be able to go very far without her glasses. Uh, what happened to the person that did this to her? Did they get off the drugs? You know? Did eventually their conscience get the better of them? No. I, I don't think it did. Because if it did, maybe they would have come forward. But I doubt that either. Because then they would probably go to prison. Or maybe they're in prison now. Maybe their life took a continued to take a bad road and maybe things in their life got worse. Maybe they died themselves. I think it's even possible that it was someone she knew and trusted and had opened the door for and maybe someone who had visited her apartment before. Maybe someone who lived near her that she knew. And maybe they realized that she was getting pain medication because she'd had this injury, this surgery to her back. And maybe she caught them. Maybe that's the reason why it looked as though she had just been relaxing at home and her glasses were off and laying on the chair arm. Maybe they attacked her in that process. But I hope one day this family will find answers and get some closure on this.